Welcome back everyone. So today we are in the office of Dr. Yermian in Los Angeles and we are about to check out a super interesting dental case and that is a vampire smile procedure. So the vampire smile is a type of smile that you could achieve by having longer canines. So you want to make your canines a little bit longer than normal and for this particular patient uh, where we're doing a smile makeover, that's what she wants. That's what she aesthetically desires is having longer canines, which gives it a vampire smile. What do you feel like it's really changed as far as people coming in and asking for different things? Absolutely. And in a lot of ways, I feel like Instagram or social media has replaced what a traditional website would do. Um, back in the day, when you want to look up a place, you look go to the website. Nowadays, I feel like people go to Instagram, and there's so much more updates on Instagram. You can post before and after stories. Um, it's become a very useful tool in our market, in our profession, and a lot of different professions. And I feel like it also gives a sort of a real life experience of what the dentist might Definitely. potentially be like, their personality, the sort of the, the staff as well, seeing if they, they are a good blend or a good fit in the practice. So it does do that, um, which I think is a powerful tool in our in our modern sort of, you know, society and, and sort of the, the new dental experience. Uh, it's, social media is really powerful. So I know there's like a lot of dentists um, on Instagram and it can be overwhelming for sure. patients to just kind of select what dentist to use. Do you have any advice for um, any potential patients? Of course I do. And I'd say do your research. I think the best would be a word of mouth referral. Absolutely. Because Definitely. you have some vouch for the person, but do their research prior to, and then, you know, you could sort of ask around as well. Uh, but. Doing research is really important. For today's case, more specifically, like what exactly went into sure. getting these results? So in today's case, we are doing or delivering porcelain veneers. The patient was, has been, ever since the kid wanted porcelain veneers. And the reason why is she had a missing front tooth. And as a child, the orthodontist pushed all the teeth closer together. So she had a bigger tooth in the front and a smaller tooth in the, uh, right next to it. So it was really a lot of disproportion. So she really was interested in porcelain veneers. And while she wanted to get this done, she also wanted that vampire smile. She wanted a longer pointy canine. So we had really achieved this for her with porcelain veneers. Um, we first started off with the whitening and she, you know, it took a few weeks to get it to the color that she wanted. We used custom trays with a little bit of a gel, which is really the best way of whitening your teeth. Uh, it's the most accurate way of whitening your teeth. So she did that until she was at a color that she liked. And in the meantime, what we did is we sent out the models to our ceramists. They were able to wax up and give us a prototype of what her smile could be. So we had her come back. We tried the smile with acrylic. So, and that's called a mock-up. So she was able to visually see it in the mouth, which is really important. It's like taking out a car for a test drive. It's really nice to have a, actually wear the smile Definitely. before you commit to it, right? So she wore it. She wore that for a few weeks and then she committed to it. And at that point, she decided she actually wanted her vampire teeth a little smaller. So, which is really interesting. She wanted them really long, but she still wants them long, but she just wanted them a little smaller. So, um, this was a really a unique experience. Um, we, after she committed to it, we prepared the teeth for the veneers. Uh, we do a minimally invasive design. So we try to keep as much enamel as possible, right? And we do it in an additive manner. So every teeth is gonna be a little longer, which means we reduce a lot less tooth structure. And the less tooth structure you move, the longer things last. Porcelain loves to bond to enamel really, really well. And that's how you have a good result. So we go ahead and prepare the teeth, take an impression, send that to the lab. She wears that prototype again for a couple weeks until the porcelain is being fabricated and made. And then today we're gonna to go ahead and deliver the veneers. So we're gonna remove everything that's there. We're gonna try on the veneers. We're gonna make sure she likes it. And if she does, we'll go ahead and cement them. When I was younger, I got in an accident and I lost a few teeth, so I never had both my canines. So I've always liked the look of pointy teeth and the vampire look, so I'm finally getting my vampire teeth. The first step is to remove her temporaries, and a lot of times it does require a little bit of anesthesia because they're locked in and there they could be you know there's some sensitivity there so we want to remove the temporaries and we apply a local anesthetic to the area and it takes about 10 maybe less than 10 minutes to get it all removed and cleaned out step two would be trying in the porcelain veneer so we have the porcelain here and we apply a little glycerin and we are able to place the 
uh, veneers in the mouth to see what she looks like. So we wanna make sure that she's happy with them, right? Because we're sort of giving her her aesthetic desire and we wanna try it in and make sure she's happy before we actually glue them then. After that, we can apply good isolation technique. The way that I try to do this is with a dental dam. And what we do is we place a dental dam on and we're able to isolate the teeth really, really well. So there isn't any saliva contaminants or fluid from your gingiva that comes out. Um, and to really even blood that, that could potentially um, sort of seep inside, it really helps isolating to get a really, really good bond. And that's what we're trying to achieve, really good bond strength for the veneers never to pop. When she's happy with the way her veneers look, we'll go ahead and start gluing the veneers. And the way I like to glue the veneers is with a restorative material. I don't use a cement, I use a material that actually could be a restoration. That's how strong they are. And the way I like to do this is one or two at a time at most. I never apply them all at the same time because a lot of times it's hard to make sure if they're seated all the way. So what we do is we cement the first two in the front and then when they're done, we go ahead and do the sides and then we do the canines at the very end. At the very end, we make sure we clean everything up. Uh, we place glycerin over the teeth, we light cure it and we dismiss the patient. We'll take some photographs We'll go ahead and take an impression for a night guard. You could tell that she wears her teeth down, so it's important for her to wear a night guard in the future. This procedure really changes a lot of people's confidence. The reason why is, at least for this specific case, she's been wanting this for such a long time. I think ever since middle school, she had you know, these teeth that were in disproportion, and she's been desiring this aesthetic for a very long time. So for, for many patients, this is like a life-changing, like a dream come yeah, true. Yeah, it's a dream yeah. come true. It's very life changing. So that that's um, and then a lot of other patients as well. They've had this image in their mind, and they want to be able to recreate it with porcelain veneers. Mm -hmm.